Welcome back to part two. From this point on we are going to paint our British infantrymen in the colours of a standard late war British infantryman. So we are commencing our base coats with Vallejo model colour English uniform. Nothing particularly fancy, just th about three thin layers of moderately thinned paint. All the painted metal we are going to do in Vallejo model colour Russian uniform, again about two to three coats until its coverage is good. And then we are going to paint the webbing in green grey, which will come out pretty white, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, at this stage all we're doing is applying the base coats, so the, your goal is to just get an even layer of colour on the um, on the model surface. So. Nothing fancy, it's tedious work, um, but nevertheless has to be done. Alright, the water bottle was usually some sort of felty type texture in a real life, I believe, so I'm going to just hit that with some flat brown Vallejo model colour, as you can see. Alright, onto the flesh, we're going to hit again two to three layers of medium flesh tone. Again, starting to be careful not to get um, paint on any of the areas which we've touched previously. Now, normally for the, uh, for the um, base uniform color, I would have airbrushed these guys 10 or 20 at a time, but since this is my first test run with the HQ units and a couple of extras, um, I'm quite content to apply um, via brush for the moment. But yeah, if you're doing Vallejo model color by uh, airbrush, be sure to thin your paint extremely diligently. So a break from the rest of the uh, military type colors of greens and browns, we are painting the um, t tin mug on his back. Well, it's an enamel tin mug um, with white, and we're going to paint the inside of it and the rim of the mug with blue. Um, another thing that I went ahead and painted is the bedroll type thing in his backpack and the um actually yeah um and the gas mask canister um the, both of those are going to get hit with olive gray i believe because the um i was trying out a different color for the gas mask case and it didn't work out so the uh metallic fittings and um other stuff for the um for the weapon i'm painting with a mixture of uh, vallejo model color black and vallejo model color gunmetal gray um at a ratio of about 80 percent black 20 percent gunmetal the reason i do this is because if you look at photos of or even real life examples if you um get the chance of uh real world um like infantry weapons you'll notice that the metallics aren't shiny for lots of obvious reasons once you think about them anyway um so yeah, that's what, so basically black with just a hint of the metallics to give it a sense, it's like a slight sheen, that looks really good. And then all you have to do is just be um, gentle with your highlighting and that pretty much finishes it. So yeah, I'm just layering up the white a bit more because it has some trouble um, going on. Um, so the I, rationale behind this guy... Oh uh, yeah, um, I'm also painting in the base with um, German camo black brown, just as our basic dirt color. And here we are repainting the um, gas mask case. Anyway, um, the idea of this particular painting method is that I want something which is fairly easy to batch out in rapid succession. So I'm not a aiming for a particularly high level of quality. I'm aiming for speed for the most part without sacrificing too much quality. Like for example, I am still giving it one it's base layer, it's one shade layer, it's one highlight layer, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so we are just about done, well, we are done with the base coat, so now onto the shade. So the color I'm using is Army Painter Midtone which is basically strong which is the actual name of strong tone but out of the um three grades of like standard brown shade um this one is the um 
the, me the medium shade basically. So the way I'm applying this is fairly usual for a wash, except what I'm going to do, once things start to pull, I'm going to clear off my wash and st uh, my brush and then start clearing it off where I feel that it's pulling a little too much in order to prevent things like tide marks from forming and that sort of thing. So yeah, I find with washes you... <sighs> is not as simple as just slathering it and leaving it be. You have to clean it up afterwards as it's starting to settle in order to prevent things like particularly dark patches from forming, especially where things pull at the bottom of large broad surfaces like shields. It's always a good idea to clean that up after the fact. Okay, with the um, wash applied and dried, I am now moving on to um, re reapplying the base layers. So this is simple, just in the um, about 70% of the model in the areas that aren't in recesses or in deep crevices, I'm going to reapply the base color for all of our colors. So starting with uh, Vallejo model color English uniform on the uniform trousers and shirt. So generally you'll only need one, maybe two layers of this particular pass to get an even coverage. Once you start to see the definition forming, um, then you know you've got it right. Another thing that I'm, well, doing this time around is I'm moving away from my Windsor & Newtons because they are expensive. So I've been trying some other alternatives. These ones are some broken toad brushes I picked up at the last CanCon, which is a local gaming convention. Well, which is fairly big actually due to it being somewhat national. I just happen to live in the home host city. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, um, they more or less hold their tip and apply uh, hold paint nicely. Um, as far as all of the like manufactured for purpose wargaming brushes, it's one of the better ones I found. Weirdly enough, Games Workshop brushes are actually quite reason can be reasonably good at times, especially the large flat ones for doing like large surfaces, when then you're not particular wor particularly worried about detail anyway. So yeah, all I'm doing is just um, uh, going in slightly, applying a bit of color, then moving on. Um, around the collar is particularly difficult as you want to take it slow in order to not um, get your English uniform over any of the other uh, layers that you've already painted. Also on the underside of things like the arms and in between the legs I'm also not going to relayer it. Um, so just to hopefully give that a bit more of an impression of shade happening in, under the arms and the like. Okay, so we're going to layer in the helmet now. So once again, reapplying the base color. So I'm going to um, layer it a bunch on the, uh, the, I don't know, the dome of the helmet. And then I'm going to briefly hit around the rims, leaving that um, band where the helmet t turns up slightly, um, the shade color. Alright, now for the not-so-fun part, the webbing. Um, again, basically uh, hit the um, the webbing in places where you feel that the majority of the light is hitting. This includes the gaiters, by the way, which I already uh, went ahead and painted with the um, base green grey. Again, relayer the um, olive grey on the gas mask case and that blanket. And importantly, uh, relayer the white. And the blue. And we're starting to get some pretty nice um, detail on that tin mug.
and again uh, reapply the color for the wood. I think I skipped over that um, but I, when I did the initial base coating, but the color I'm using is Vallejo Model Color Beige Brown. So yeah, standard deal. Beige Brown is base, shade, reapply the midtones with the um, beige brown, leaving the shade in the recesses. Same as all of the other colors on this model. I'm also painting the entrenching tool handle the same color and again uh, reapplying the um, flat brown on the water bottle. And that's pretty much it for the um, mid-tones reapplied. Oh uh, no, I, I'm mistaken. I'll also reapply the um, Medium flesh tone? Yeah, medium flesh tone on the um, all of the skin areas, again, leaving the uh, recesses the shaded colour. So yeah, when doing the face, I generally hit the cheeks. I am trying to get a gradient of colour going from lightest around the eyes, um, the upper cheekbones, going down to the actual cheeks themselves, and also hitting the um, the the uh, nose and the lower chin with the um, base colour, with the mid-tone again. Um, and with the hands, I'm painting the um, majority of the colour and also trying to get a thin line of the colour along the very fingertips. Yeah, unfortunately I have to try and get at some very odd angles for this level of detail. But oh well. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here. Maybe cleaning up a mistake? I It honestly escapes me. No, more flesh by the looks of it. Anyway, um, moving on. So, uh, moving on to the highlighting, the first highlight I did was English Uniform mixed in with um, USA 10 Earth, and when that didn't quite give the level of contrast I was hoping for, I switched it out for Vallejo Model Color, color Buff mixed in with English Uniform, and the results were a little better. <gasps> oh, sorry. <clears throat> but still, the, um, the highlight was pretty soft, but that's quite fine. I'm not going to try and win painting competitions with this particular paint job. It's a model that's done, and there's going to be a lot of these guys on the table together. Okay, as I'm going along, I'm adding in more buff to the um, English Uniform Mix to get a gradually lighter highlight, then layering it on top of the existing highlights to build up a bit of a transition. Um, even after doing this, it still came out remarkable, very, very subtle and not particularly visible, but yeah... Um, didn't really feel like taking it any further due to time constraints and after all this is intended to be a batch job not something that I would am going to try and win painting competitions with. So every layer that you choose to do adds time it's up to you to decide when that cost is too much compared to the amount of miniatures you have to deliver. Say there's I don't know like at least three squads of ten maybe more plus additional support units a tank in the bolt action British infantry starter box I am not going to attempt to get a very high qual quality paint job on all of those guys because, quite frankly, I don't have the time. Okay, now we're moving on to the webbing kit. Um, this colour is... I believe it's just the green-grey with buff mixed in. So I'm being very sparse with this, so just picking out little bits here and there and on the backpack, which I feel deserve the highlight. Um, so yeah, to, to, like for example, the very top of the backpack, the very um, the sharpest creases on the webbing and the edges of the backpack, as well as a little bit of um, the sides of the backpack about halfway up. So 
So as usual, it's a matter of, yeah, there's me making a mistake and wiping it out. So if you want to clean up any mistakes and you basically the moment paint goes down and you realize you've made a mistake, you can still fix that. You just have to clean off your brush, load it up with water and um, just hit that spot for like two or three passes until um, the paint's um, washed away. If it's a large enough area, you'll have to use a paper towel to sop up the rest because unless you clean it up, it'll look like a stain on the model. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically I'm trying to pick out the edges, though it's quite a hard job, so in the end I just opted to sort of like highlight the tops of the most exposed areas to light, like for example the upper portions of the um, webbing straps. I'm generally a little more sparing with these highlights towards the bottom of the miniature, like only get getting the very sharpest creases on his gaiters down near his boots. Alright, now for the helmet. So, I am going to hi highlight the very top of the helmet using a mix of, I believe it's buff and Russian uniform, but I'm being tr going to try and be very careful about it, so just layer it up a couple of thin times and then edge highlight the very brim of the helmet, so it'll give us some good transitions between the base colour, the highlight areas and the shade areas. So I'm going to highlight the very rim of the tin mug. Um, I believe that is um, just the uh, Prussian blue with some white mixed in, and I'm just going to highlight the very bottom of the mug with a thin layer of just pure white. Um, I believe the all of the olive grey parts were highlighted with olive green, um, just with that mixed in 50-50 mixture and gradually lightened up to increase the magnitude of the highlight as I move on. Um, so yeah, only a couple of parts which were, the, which were this colour, so it's a pretty quick and simple step. That's the interesting thing about highlighting is that it's actually probably one of the fastest steps of the entire painting process, the longest being the base coating, which is two to three layers. It's an art, in, an art into itself, which it's you certainly won't go wrong if you try and master the art of getting a good base coat down quickly. Anyway, moving on to the flesh, this is just the Vallejo model color highlight flesh from the Panzer Aces range, I believe, and I'm applying it to the very tops of the cheekbones, uh, the nose, and running a thin line along each of the fingers um, on the flesh. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, a little bit on the chin where it sort of protrudes from the rest of the head. The thing about these miniatures is that they're quite pudgy in terms of their um, facial features, so you want to emphasize that a bit when you're doing your painting. Okay, we're on the home stretch now, so we're just going to quickly highlight the metal. Now this is again a mix of gunmetal grey with black, but the gunmetal grey is now in the majority, and I'm only just touching a couple of the more protruding bits of metal, and that'll give us a slight highlight. Like, we don't want to make it too bright, otherwise it'll look a bit ridiculous. Okay, so the, the boots I'm highlighting with German grey, um, mixed with black, so trying to build that up very slowly, because I screwed this up a couple of times, then have to go back, rebase coat it, then um, paint them again. So yeah, generally all of the slightly upwards facing surfaces of the boot, just a thin layer of German grey, and 
That more or less works. I'm not going to work hard on highlighting the black because, quite frankly, it's a pain to do. And if you want to do it properly, you have to start with a base of blue or grey or something and then shade down to get a properly highlighted black. But, yeah, it's simple and it works for this scale. So the eyes are next. Um, if you don't want to do eyes, I, but you don't have to, you, you probably won't be noticed. Um, the way I'm doing it first is a I'm further darkening the eye sockets with a mix of a brown of some kind and the basic flesh tone. Well, that's what I believe I've done. Now I'm applying the eye itself in the center of that brownish spot. Um, so yeah, just very, very carefully paint out the shape of it. Which, as you can see, I'm <clears throat> trying to emphasize a lot more caution and slow speed. You also... You want to get your paint really thin so that it flows easy, easy, but you don't want to load up your brush to the point where if you touch the brush, the paint flows into the eye socket. So that's why I have the paper towel handy in the background. It's really useful for um, getting rid of that excess paint. Anyway, I'm applying the... Um, I'm using German Grey as my dot color. So I'm doing simple eyes, just uh, sh uh, base, a darkened flesh um, eye white color, which is off-white, off I believe, not a pure white, and then German Grey. So a lot of other painters use black and a more pure white, but um, a painter I had a chat to once reckoned that, um, oh yeah, I'm fixing up some mistakes with the eyes there, that if you do a pure white and pure black, it makes the models look surprised, and after closer inspection, I tend to uh, agree with that. So choosing softer colors for the eyes is pretty good. It's like more off-whites and not going all the way to black. So with the remaining German grey head on my palette, I thinned it down a lot and I'm tr putting a very thin glaze over his cheek and upper lip because he's I painted his hair black, which you probably won't see. Well, hair's hair and mustache black. So I'm putting trying to put down some very thin layers to get some stubble going. Uh, it's probably just... I only did it for fun, really. Um, won't really matter much. Anyway, um, moving on to finishing off the bases. So here I'm overbrushing a coat of... Uh, brown Earth, uh, Brown Earth, Val I think, yeah, the Vallejo model color Brown Earth. So overbrushing is sort of like dry brushing, except your brush is still mostly wet, and you're aiming to only cover about 50% of the surface in your color. So yeah, this leaves the um, original German camo black brown showing through nicely. And then um, base coating the rocks, I'm doing this with these guys with German Grey, I believe. So, I'm also using my crappy older brushes for this age. Ah, oh, yep. Okay, that was a... I made a mistake there, and I put some German Grey on his arm, so you can see I'm quickly cleaning it off there. So, if you make a mistake and detect it early, you can fix it quite early. So, it's, that's, a, not why, that's why it's another reason to work with very thin paint. It's easier to beat it before it cures, so to speak. Again, I'm overbrushing, this time with, um, I think it's medium grey or something like that, Vallejo model colour medium grey, um, on the rocks. So, yeah, the idea is you just get most of the colour, um, or maybe I skipped it. Um, anyway, um, now I'm applying my final dry brush to the um, earth portion. So this is Iraqi sand with a an actual dry brush. So you just tamp it in gently and you'll eventually build up the color to the point where you're happy with it. So I ended up switching to my smaller dry brush just to get at the um, details closer to his legs so I don't um, accidentally hit his feet with the dry brush. Okay, I'm also going to apply some more highlights to his hair, so this is just a, I think a bit of German Grey mixed in with, oh, um, yeah, I don't remember, probably German Grey with um, the medium Grey anyway, I'm, and I'm also rimming the bases. Um, how you do this is largely stylistic, some people prefer a dirt or a green colour, I've always preferred black, because I, just a stylistic thing, so it's very simple, just use the side of your brush, edge around and that's it. Anyway, so finishing off the rocks as well, I'm applying... What am I doing there? No, oh, this is the overbrush, yeah. Now I'm putting down the overbrush of medium grey on the um, 
on the rocks, so you want to cover most of it, but leave the German Graith showing through in parts, um, and then you'll get a nice um, base to work from when you do your final dry brush, which is now. So I'll just get my small dry brush going. It's mostly off camera. Get the rag out of the way, and yeah, you just want to gently rub this across the top of the rock a bit, and then leave it at that. Um, and then you have some highlighted rocks, and with that, the paint job is pretty much done. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's um, the preliminary finished result. I've just got a few more quality of life things to do. And then um, we'll move on to the basing. Well, the final touches for the base, rather. So, like a dumbass, I forgot to record the um, first part of this. So, I basically, some PVA or uh, white glue if you're American, uh, dipped it in my handy tub of flock and for a few patches and that's it. Then I'm going to put down just a single tuft of gamer grass and there. And that's me blowing on the model like an idiot and therefore subsequently sending grass all over my desk. So yeah, and that's pretty much the model done. Um, one important caveat though, I haven't actually put the transfers on his arm which denote his like regimental flash and um, rank and stuff. I'm going to do all of them in one big batch once I've completed the entirety of this army so I know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's going to happen, I don't know, months from now, once I've actually finished the damned army. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, overall I'm quite happy with the result considering the amount of effort I put in. Um, in mass, these guys are going to look great on the tabletop, so most definitely happy with the final result. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you'd enjoyed this. Um, I actually owe a lot to YouTube for teaching me how to paint properly, so I consider this my way of giving back after um, learning how to paint from guys like Doc Faust and the Apathetic Fish and uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, uh, thanks very much. I hope your own painting endeavours go well, and I'll see you on the next video. Farewell.